Hello and welcome back to Supply Chain Management. In this lecture on forecasting, we're going to talk about the different methods of adaptive forecasting. So remember that you did static forecasting and now you're looking at adaptive forecasting. So let's kind of look at the difference between static forecasting and adaptive forecasting. Um, in static forecasting, remember we said that the forecast is not updated at every data point, whereas an adaptive forecasting is when the forecast is updated every time period. So in static, we first calculate the level and trend, right? Remember, we do the regression equation and the intercept is the level, slope is the trend, and then we calculate the seasonal index and then we use it and it's static, it doesn't change, right? Whereas in adaptive forecasting, this changes all the time. And so for it to change, we are going to learn three new variables. We have not used these variables before, and they're called alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha corresponds to the level, beta corresponds to trend, and gamma corresponds to seasonality. So when we get new demand data, Alpha is the percentage of that new data we are going to use to update our level, right? So level gets updated. Beta is the percentage of that new data we are going to update trend. And gamma is the percentage of new data we are going to update seasonality. Now I want, I want to stop right here. Alpha, beta, and gamma are not level, trend, and seasonality. It is the percentage of new data you are going to use to update level trend and seasonality. Okay, this is important. A lot of times when I see presentations, people go, well, alpha is 10%, that's 10% level. It is not 10% level. It is 10% of new data that you're going to use, which means 90% of the level is going to be old data and new data, only 10% of it is used to update the level. I hope you understand the difference between the two. When alpha, beta, and gamma are zero, right, then level, trend, and seasonality is static. So zero alpha does not mean there is no level. Again, this is another mistake people make when they uh, do their presentations. Uh, alpha of zero essentially means you are not using any new data to update your level, and therefore it is static. Alpha of 100% means you're using all the new data and you're just throwing out the old data, right? And you're using everything from the new data, okay? So alpha, beta, and gamma are all values between zero and one. So adaptive forecasting is needed when level, trend, and seasonality are not constant, but changes over a period of time. So remember, when we talked about forecasts, we talked about addictive, multiplicative, and mixed models, right? And I think in this in this lecture and in this chapter, we are focusing on mixed models. We are not really going over additive and multiplicative. And the only difference between them is mixed models does level plus trend. When you calculate your forecast, we use level plus trend, and then we multiply the whole thing times seasonality. Whereas in multiplicative, we multiply all three, in additive, we add all three. So we are gonna use the mixed model. And this is your forecast equation. And so here we have the equation. F is the forecast, L is level, T is trend, and S is seasonality. And the small t is the time period. So let's look at the first forecast, which is simple moving average. And this is the easiest and the most basic of forecasts. And a lot of, lot of companies use this. So when demand has no observable trend, so first thing you do is, of course, plot and put a scatter plot. And you see, well, there's no real trend or seasonality. There's some random fluctuations. You can use simple moving average. So the systematic component of demand is just level. And level in period T is the average demand over last end periods. So essentially, we have to figure out how many periods we're going to use. Are we going to use four period, simple moving average, three period, two period, and then we essentially calculate the level 
with the average of that. And the next time periods forecast is the previous time periods level. So this is important, right? Next time periods forecast is the previous time periods level. And then once you run out of data, right, after that, all the other forecasts are the last level you calculated. So after observing the demand, we revise the estimates, right? Here we go. And so here is an example. A supermarket has experienced weekly demand for milk. And we say the first demand is 120, 127, 114, 122 over the past four weeks. So four weeks of demand. So now we are saying forecast the demand for period pi using four period moving average. So four period moving average will be the average of the four periods. And it comes to 120.75. And therefore the demand for the fifth period is 120.75. So I also want to point out that once you calculate this and there is no more demand left, you don't have a D5 or a D6. If you want to forecast F6 or F7, which is for time period 6 or 7, it would still remain at 120.75, right? It doesn't keep updating. So the forecasting error, if the actual demand, D5, was 125, the forecasting error would be 125 minus 120.75, which is 4.25. Now, for level for 5, would be D5, D4, D3, and D2, the average of them, which would give you 122, right? And therefore, the forecast for time period 6 would be 122. Let's take this to Excel. So here is data, and you're asked to create a four-point moving average. And with every one of these things, you're asked to calculate the mean squared error, root mean squared error, MAD, MSE, tracking signal, and then 95% confidence interval using the standard deviation calculator from MAD. And you show the plot with demand forecast and confidence interval. This is going to be the standard for all forecasting methods. The only difference is which forecasting method you are going to use to create your forecast. The first step in any forecasting, as we know, is to plot the data. So let's go ahead and plot the scatter plot and see what's happening. Um, you can see the data, and as you look at it, let's go ahead and change the axis here. Um, and we use the minor unit is one. And here we go. So while, you know, this data seems to go up and down, um, there is no specific pattern. There is no seasonality. You know, it's, you know, one, two, three, four goes up. This is flat. Four goes up. Four, five, six goes up. Then it's down again. Then it goes up. Uh, and there is doesn't seem to be any reasonable trend. And you can check the trend by trying to add a trend line. So it seems like trend is slightly positive, but in this particular example, we are going to use um, the moving average. We are just going to assume there is no trend, there is no seasonality, and we are going to use a four period moving average. Now for moving average, it's important whether you are told it's four period or three period because that gives you the number of periods you need to use, or a two period, right? So in the four period moving average, you start off with one, two, three, four, and so you start right here, and you take the average, you start off with the average of the four periods. Now remember, the level here is at the fourth period, all right? The next step is to then use this level in the next time periods forecast. Remember that it is the next time periods forecast and not the same time periods forecast. So the time period has to be time period five, all right? Time period five is the level equal to the level of time period four, all right? And once you have that, you can then create your forecast, 
all right just copy this down all the way down right and these will essentially be constant and therefore this will be copied down and it's constant it doesn't change all right so you can see that it's still the same values all right so here we go we finished simple moving average and it's important for all of you with every thing is to create your error your mean squared error mad all of this must be calculated and since this is your first your second video i'm not going to go through it you can take a look at it and here is your graph of your four period moving average here is the actual forecast here is your demand um, and as i said before it is a good idea to change this to jagged lines rather than um you know kind of smooth lines and here is your confidence uh, values which you're given right you're 95 percent confident that your forecast you know that the actual values are going to be between these two values all right so we finished simple moving average and now we are moving on to the next one simple exponential smoothing or exponential smoothing now simple moving average essentially takes all the past observations and weights it equally so if you have the average of four then each observation is weighted 25 percent if it's a two period moving average then each observation is weighted at at 50 percent exponential smoothing observations are used uh, to assign exponentially decreasing weights over a period of time and it uses a smoothing factor we call that alpha and alpha is the percentage of new data which is taken in to adjust the level remember both these forecasting methods assume there is no trend or seasonality they are only looking at level now higher the alpha the more reactive and less smoothing the effect is uh, alpha is between 0 and 1 and this again this is used when demand has no observable trend or seasonality the systematic component of demand is level and the initial estimate of level L0 is assumed to be the average of all historical data so let's look at the formulas uh, given data from periods 1 to n L0 is the average of all demands remember D is your actual demand n is the time periods the current forecast that is ft plus one is the previous time periods level and once you start having forecasts beyond the point where you have data you have n time periods of data and after that the level kind of remains constant revised forecast uses a smoothing constant and therefore here is the formula for level it takes the new alpha percentage of the new data and one minus alpha percentage of the old level so if you look at this if alpha is 10 percent it takes 10 percent of the new demand data and 90 percent of the old level okay so that's why it's the percentage of new data you use to update your level so here is an example same example for milk so many gallons of milk 120 127 114 and 122 gallons you're assuming alpha is 10 percent and you're going to forecast demand for time period five so here your l0 you start off with 120.75 and that's your first time periods forecast then you calculate your error your error is 0.75 because your actual demand is 120. now your l1 is alpha times your demand 120 10 percent of 120 that's 12 and then 90 percent of 120.75 which gives you 120.68 that's your l1 which becomes your f2 similarly l2 you take uh your find your error again right and then you calculate it and you can go ahead and finish the calculations and now we're going to show how we are going to do this in Excel 
and we are going to use our solver to optimize what alpha should be. So we're going to start off with alpha of 10%, but then we're going to run this. The optimizer is going to figure out what's the best value of alpha so that we can get the lowest MAD. So here is the same data set as we did for moving average. And as you'll note, as we talked about before, um, this has some random fluctuations, but no noticeable trend or seasonality. So the first thing you're going to do is to essentially create a variable called alpha, which you're going to use to calculate your level, right? Your first level, that is for time period zero, even if you haven't been given a time period zero, I would advise you to go ahead, insert a row and create time period zero. And time period zero is going to be the average of all this. So under L0, you're going to go select the average, right? You're going to go put the average of the entire demand. That is your L0. And then F1 is essentially equal to L0. And so you are going to refer that here. Now we come to the main formula and then which we can copy down, right? So remember that the formula was alpha multiplied by D1 plus one minus alpha multiplied by the old level, right? So make sure that the alpha you use, that is B20, has a dollar sign because when you copy the B20 down, you don't want that to change to B21 and B22, okay? So now that we have both of this as it is, we can then copy and paste the entire formula up to this point, right? Paste function, and then you paste the formula, right? All the way up to here. So here we have, and then this one is essentially equal to this. But now that as we copy this down, this value should not change. It should still be C15. And therefore, we go ahead and put a dollar sign here, and then we can go ahead and copy this down which will give you the dollar sign, right? And again, as I said, you have to calculate all the errors and each one of that. Now, as you do the errors, you will get your MAD, which is the same as this, and this is what you're going to minimize. If you want to take a look at, at the graph, you can see with the confidence interval and the forecast, it's pretty much in orange and you can actually extend your confidence interval all the way down here there you go okay now this must be then optimized so you copy the sheet remember we cannot just continue we copy the sheet we will then use our analytic solver right for those of you who don't have analytic solver, you can use your data analysis tool pack, sorry, your solver here, right? And so here, optimization, your objective here, mean absolute deviation is minimized, right? That's your objective. Your variable is alpha. You select that and that's it. And then you run it to make sure you get the right answer. So you can see that you have reduced your MAD from 491 to about 410 with alpha at 49%, okay? You could also use this solver under data solver. And again, objective is this fu function, is this cell, your mean absolute deviation, you minimize it, and the changing cell is your alpha, and you can run it. The advantage of using this, if you have the analytic solver, is it's a little bit more powerful and it will get you a better answer. 